Paul Schechtman. For most of my adult life, I have practiced criminal law. First, for more than a decade as a prosecutor, and as for the last 15 years as a criminal defense attorney. Much of that work has brought me into contact with the Orthodox Jewish community. And is that that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about a topic that saddens me, and that is the topic of crime in the Orthodox Jewish community and what we can do about it. When I was young, my father had a saying. He was not a very religious man, but he was very proud of being Jewish. And what he said was this. He said that he was proud that there were no Jews in Congress He did not like politicians. He was proud that there were no Jews in Congress and no Jews in prison. Well, now the good news, I suppose, is that there are many Jews in Congress. And the bad news, the very bad news, is there are many Jews in prison. We now know that if you go to Otisville in the federal system, you can not only get a minion, but half, if not more, of the prison, of the camp, is filled with Jews. We know if you go to Green Haven in the state system, there is a kosher prison, I'm sorry, um, kosher food, a kosher kitchen. Should one be proud that half of an institution is Orthodox Jewish? Should one be proud that the state system has a kosher kitchen? Yet that is the world we live in. When I started as a prosecutor, if you saw a Hasidic man in the courtroom, you thought, this must be some mistake. There must be something wrong. Now, if you're in the Eastern District, or in Brooklyn, or in Rockland County, and you see a Hasidic man in the courtroom, what the judges will say to you is, this is not uncommon. This is too much the norm. I think of the Jewish people the way my father thought of them, as the chosen people, but not chosen for Otisville and not chosen for Green Haven, chosen for good lives in their communities. When I go to Borough Park, I come away with an enormous feeling of pride. It is a community where people take care of each other. It is a community um, where sadaka is an everyday thing. It is not a once a year thing. It is a community where if you want to ride from Borough Park to Williamsburg, you stand on the street corner and someone gives you a ride. It is a community where if you have to go to the hospital, um, there are scores of people who will drive you to the hospital. But underneath it, Underneath all that goodness, underneath all that concern for family, there's crime. There's lack of respect for the law, not for God's law. I have clients who will come to me and leave early on Shabbos so they get home. But why have they come to me? Because they violated man's law. They violated the New York penal law or the federal law or the wire fraud statute or the mail fraud statute or some other statute, because respect for man's law, for the penal law, seems far less important to them than respect for religious law. And that can't be right, because both in our society are important. And a good Jew, in my view, honors both, not just one. Now, what does one do about it? How does one prevent yourself from joining others in Otisville or Green Haven? Well, I'd say a few things about that. The first thing is this. Respect the government of this country, state, federal, local. When our grandparents grew up in Europe, there was reason not to respect the government. They were oppressive governments. They were governments that did their best to make sure that Jews um, lived in ghettos. They were governments that brought pogroms on our people. Whatever one thinks of the government of the United States, or of the state of New York, or of the city of New York, 
They are not oppressive governments. They are not governments that single out Jews for wrongs. I can go to meetings with state officials, right, with city officials, and you walk around the table, you look around the table, and there are Jews in high positions of authorities, writing the laws, making decisions. This is not Europe. And so for those of us who think, ah, it's okay because it's just the government, or ah, it's okay because it's just the bank, it's not okay. Stealing from the government is a very serious crime. There are limits on those benefits and they need to be honored. The second thing that one has to do is to think, to think through the consequences. My grandmother used to talk about having a Yiddish cup, right, having a good head, and one avoids criminal conduct by thinking about the consequences, by saying to them yourself, what will happen if I do this? The third thing is to talk to a lawyer before, not after. I have a good friend in the jewelry district, and what I love about him so much, he lives in Borough Park, what I love about him so much is he calls me and says, can I do this? Should I do this? I'd like to do this, right? but will I get in trouble? He calls before, not after, and the result of that is his business is thriving, and he is not in trouble. He always wants to know where the line is before, not after. So, and it doesn't have to be a lawyer. This is not a, 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 um, a speech for full employment for lawyers. There are rabbis in every community that know where the line is. There are rabbis whose judgment is as good as lawyers. Right? But talk to them, not, not um, after, before. Too many people think you go to a rabbi after and you say, who are the good lawyers? Go to a rabbi before and say, can I do this? Will I get in trouble? So that is my advice. It is not complicated. It is respect the government, respect the laws. Don't think it is okay to steal just because the victim is a bank or a government program. Use your Kepler, use your head and talk to people before, whether it's lawyers, rabbis, or friends who are, who are wiser than you. Right? That is my advice. The tragedy for me is the number of good people that I see who wind up in a prison, who wind up in a jail. I spent time the other day with a, a lovely man, a Hasidic man, right, who had two completely separate identities. One identity that he did use for most of his life and did good with. And another identity that he used if he needed to defraud a government program. And we talked. And he talked about his family and his children and his grandchildren and his joys. And at the end of the conversation I said, you're a lovely man. And he held up his fingers and he said, two men. And he was, because it was as if he was schizophrenic. He had two identities. Right? One for good and one for wrong. Well, I don't know my Talmud well, but my guess is somewhere in there, right, one learns that one only has one life and one identity, and that life should be good, not just on Shabbos, but throughout, throughout the week. So that is my lesson. I spent far too much time as a criminal defense attorney sitting with wives and mothers and children explaining that their father is going to jail or their husband is going to jail. Sitting with people who didn't have much money to begin with, who now have no income producer. If you say to a judge, judge, think of the children. Think of the wife. Think of the older parents who need this person. What judges say over and over again is, your client should have thought about that before. I'm not going to think about it now. So don't think just because you have a large family and a good family 
It is a get out of jail free card. What it is, is a recipe for leaving behind children who are without a father and without a father's love. If I go into Hasidic communities, if I go to Borough Park or Williamsburg or Square, what makes me so happy is to watch as fathers walk their sons to shul on Friday night, to continue the traditions. I criticize myself for not following those traditions because there's enormous beauty in seeing a father walk a son to shul on a Friday night. There's no beauty in having a father in prison on a Friday night and a son having no one to pass on those traditions. So I don't mean to be melancholy or maudlin or to preach too much, but I do mean to say it would be nice if my father were half right that there are no Jews in prison. And that can happen if people think, if people talk to others, if people recognize that there are things they're entitled to and not entitled to. If we obey the penal law with the same fervor that we obey the rules of God. If we're concerned as much about living lawful lives as we are about getting home on a night in time for the Shabbos. Again, I thank you. I'm very happy to have had the chance to, to speak. Sometimes, as a criminal defense attorney, I get good results from my clients. And at the end, they say to me, I'm very happy to have met you, and I hope I never see you again. Even better still is not to see me at all or not to see other criminal defense attorneys um, or to see me before and not after. So I thank, thank Rabbi Stein, I thank Rabbi Freund, um, and um, I hope I've said, said something today that rings true to you. God bless you.